Welcome back. All right, so this is how we're going to do try it exercise uh, number seven. All right, so we know that the future value we want is eight thousand five hundred dollars, uh, and we want to figure this out in ten years. So in ten years, I want eight thousand five hundred dollars. It's going to be compounded quarterly. That's our savings vehicle, compounded quarterly at six percent. All right, so we know that the interest rate per period. If it's quarterly, then it's going to be four times a year. So 6% divided by 4 gives us 1.5% per period. So that'll be what we look at along the top of the table. Now we know the total periods is 10 years times 4 if it's quarterly. So that's 40 periods. That's well beyond the 25. So we know that we need 40 periods. And if we divide that by 2, that's 20. Sorry, my... Uh, I'll draw a line here to kind of break that apart. So 20 plus 20 equals 40. So I look at, on the chart, 20 periods at 1.5%. All right, so there's 1.5. 20 periods is down here. So 0 0.74247. 0 0.74247, that's what I had written down here. So when I take 0 0.74247 and multiply that by itself, that should give me... 0.55126. The next number is 1, so I leave it as that. 55126. Five, Don't have to worry about the 1. Don't have to, uh, to round up. So now that I have the factor, all right, I take that point set point, sorry, to find the present value, take the factor, 55126, five, multiply that by my future value. $8,500, and that should equal $4,685.72. The next factor, or the next digit was four, so that doesn't round up. Two stays the same. So that should be the present value. All right? So if we want to know the interest that was earned, 8500 Minus the present value, $4,685.72. 10 is 8. 9 is 2. 9 is 4. 9 is 1. 14 is 8. And 7 is 3. So we're going to earn $3,814.28. So if our present value is $4,600, we're only $400 off, $460, $70 off, $70 off, $470 from actually doubling our money. All right? And if you remember, if we looked at the law of 72, if we take 72, divide it by 6%, it's going to be about 10 years. I think it'll go closer to 11 maybe, somewhere between 10 and 11. We double our money. All right, so you can see, oh, I guess I should push this up here, shouldn't I? You can see uh, the interest rate, uh, how much interest we would earn. All right, so that's how you figure out if your the periods extend beyond your table, how to figure that out. Now, I, I just wanted to point back here uh, on the previous page. Am I looking? Oh, nope, page over. There we go. Uh, the learning tip here, all right? And it's just reiterating what I said earlier. If you're trying to decide which table to use if you're using tables, which table do I use for the compounding interest uh, or the future value or the present value? All right? So if you're finding out the compounded amount for the future value, that's what I was saying. All the, the factors are greater than one because you want a bigger number all the present value table factors are less than one because you're going from the compounded amount or the future value to the present value. So when solving for the compounded amount, a future amount greater than the present value, use the table factors greater than one. And when solving for the present value, a present value is less than the future value, use the table factors that have less than one. So that's the easiest way to remember which table to use. All right? So now we will go to the last section of chapter 11. All right, here we go. Peace.